moving into the Word. Holy Spirit sharing, shaping the character of the first church. Holy Spirit shaping the character of the first church. Beginning from verse 36, therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified both the Lord and Christ. Now, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart. The other word is they were pierced. The other word is they are pricked. They were pricked. And King James puts it in the cut form. Their hearts were cut. And they said to Peter and the rest of the, of the apostles, man and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said to them, repent and let every one of you be baptized. In the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is to you. And to your children. And to all who are afar off. As many as the Lord our God will call. And with many other words. He testified and exhorted them. Saying be saved from this perverse generation. For to one. Then those who gladly received his word were baptized. And that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in prayers. Prayers, plural. Then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now all who believed were together and had all things in common and sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as everyone or as anyone had need. So continually, daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and the simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. The purpose of the gospel, the purpose of the establishment of the church, is that many are going to be saved. People are going to come to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. The purpose of Jesus coming was so that he may save those who believe on the gift of God. The free gift of God the Father is eternal life through Jesus Christ. And the church that is started its main focus is that many are going to come to be saved. Many are going to come to know the Lord Jesus Christ and the progression of the gospel continues from generation to generation. And you see it in children. This morning, they were performing here, showing that they are in those early stages of learning about the things of God. Let me ask you a question. How many people were helped in coming to know the Lord through Sunday school ministry. How many Sunday school ministry in your churches? Raise up your hands boldly. Okay. How many came to know the Lord Jesus Christ through evangelistic campaigns? Evangelistic campaigns. Right. In one way or the other, there was an avenue that was provided. And for us as church, we have an avenue through Christian education to train our children in the things of God. And the main purpose is that they may be saved. Because when you read the last part, praising God and having favor with all people, and the Lord added to the church daily those who are being saved. The 
the coming of the Holy Spirit we saw last Sunday, but one. That as they were waiting, all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them. And Peter starts a message from verse 14 all the way to where we are today just to explain the phenomenon, what had already taken place. But I want to tell you that even in that crowd, some were doubting. They were saying that these men are behaving this way. These people are behaving this way because they are drunk with wine. But Peter continues to say they are not drunk. It is only 9 o'clock. And you don't get drunk in 9 o'clock. But the promise was given through the prophet. And it has come to be fulfilled today. Prophet John. You remember saying in the last days the spirit of God will be poured upon children. That young men shall see visions. And upon the elderly. That the fathers now. They will see dreams. And that the Spirit of God will be poured upon slaves, upon daughters, and upon sons. Peter spent a long time to explain that. But something happened. Something happened when they saw the message that Peter was bringing was so strong a message. They were pricked. They were cut in their heart. Because the revelation of who Jesus Christ was has come to be. Peter very clearly demonstrated that this one that you have crucified, God has made him Lord. That means he has claimed to be God. He is God. And has made him the Christ, meaning Yeshua, meaning Savior, meaning the Redeemer. But I want you to know something today. Holy Spirit, in the verses we read, is shaping the character of the church. It is the Holy Spirit has already come to the church, but the Holy Spirit in the church now begins to build a character. And that is what I want uh, for us as, as KICC. At KICC, we want that, myself as a pastor, my senior pastor, and everyone else in the church of Jesus Christ, my children, the Holy Spirit to shape a particular character, a character that conforms to God's character. Jesus Christ being formed from within and being expelled out to go and touch many others. Until Christ Jesus is formed in the life of our children, in the life of our daughters, in the lives of our sons, in the lives of the church members, there is nothing that is going to happen. Peter, who was a coward, I want you to see this, the character is being formed now. Peter, who was a coward, in three counts, number one, he denied Jesus Christ during crucifixion. Matthew 26, 69, 75. He denied. He was told by a woman, a lady, are you one of them? He said, no. Do you know him? He said, I don't know him. And number two count. He deserted the ministry after Jesus died. Many people do not read the whole scripture. He went back. This gentleman went back. He went back to fishing. In fact, let's go there. Uh, John 21, 1 to 3. Let's go there. I know we are pressed with the time, but let's go there. John. Luke, John. 21, verse 1 to 3. After these things, Jesus showed himself Again, did I say 21 or 20? 21. Yes. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of 
Tiberius. And in this way he showed himself. Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee, and two others to his disciples were together. Simon Peter said to Sam, I am going on fishing. Are you with me? Verse 3. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We are going with you also. They went out and immediately got into the boat, and that night they caught nothing. G uh, Peter was in the process of moving away from the calling. And in, an, in another portion of scripture, Jesus comes and asks him, do you love me, Peter? More than these, do you love me? Do you love me? Three times. And then finally Peter said, you know everything. You know my heart, Lord. You know everything. Peter left, he started the ministry. You remember our senior pastor spent good time to expound what happened after Jesus Christ died, who came to the tomb first? Who came to the tomb first? The women were there. And who remained even throughout the crucifixion, throughout the process, who remained? The women were there. But Peter had decided. He went back on fishing. However, here in chapter 2 of the book of Acts, you are seeing something very different. That 6. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God had made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both the Lord and the Christ. And now, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart, and they said to Peter and the rest, Men and brethren, what shall we do? So you are seeing already a character of boldness created in the life of Peter because he is coming in with boldness and he is telling the people Kinagana without ganja. You know, Kutiri Ganja, you know that one? That's what it is. Without ganja, without gravel, any mixture of gravel or anything that is coming in. Faith to fix Peter is coming and making it known that he is standing on the behalf of Jesus Christ and he is not turning back as he did in, in, in the earlier life. So that is a character of boldness. He came and testified about Jesus Christ. This is important to me as a minister and as a Christian of the gospel because it means that as the Holy Spirit came in the life of the church, in the life of the disciples, and now we are looking at Peter, it is not business as usual. Business as usual is gone. And that's what happens when the Holy Spirit has come upon a church. It is not business as usual. Women are not behaving the same. Men are not behaving the same. Children are not behaving the same. Young and young adults are not behaving the same. Everything changes. Hallelujah. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Clap for Jesus. Amen. Business is not the same. It is not about I, 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 me, 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 me. And who is the other? Myself, 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 myself. Three personal pronouns. I, me, myself. It is no longer I that live it. You remember? Paul has that testimony. And here it is no longer Peter that live it, the coward, the one that went back into the fishing. So the church is never the same after realizing the filling of the Holy Spirit after embracing God in his fullness because the coming of the Holy Spirit demonstrates the fullness of God falling down upon his people and then they do exploit for him. Hallelujah. 
It is not business as usual. The power of the Holy Spirit had rested upon Peter. Peter, his total being was full of the interests and the purposes of testifying and witnessing about Jesus Christ as Lord according to the promise. Acts 1.8, you've got to link these things. Jesus Christ speaking said, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be my witnesses beginning from Jerusalem and Judea, Samaria, and to the end parts of the world to the point that the gospel was brought to us by the missionaries at our backyard. They brought the gospel there. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. In obedience to the calling of Jesus Christ when he said, and you shall receive power. And we saw in John that Jesus Christ is the one who went to the Father and sent the Holy Spirit to come upon his own people. And now the power is actualized. The power is to receive. That's why our last message was the Holy Spirit of God came and he was received by the people. And that is my prayer for KICC, to receive the power of the Holy Spirit and do exploit for Jesus. Amen? Amen. That's why my prayer is to all churches, not only KICC, all churches to be rekindled again and have the Holy Spirit work in them. And those who are weak Christians, those of us that are struggling for the Holy Spirit to come into our lives and rejuvenate and bring this fire and rekindle us to do more exploits for Jesus. Because number one, when the Holy Spirit comes, he shakes the whole church. And when you shake something, some, some uh, if you shake a tree, what happens? Oh, everything that is loose, that's what? It falls down. And that is what it is. When the church is shaken by the Holy Spirit, any hanging sin falls down. Hallelujah. Amen. It falls down. Down, down, sit down. It falls down. And the church stands as a holy bride of Jesus Christ and, and does the work for Jesus Christ. So witnessing does not become a burden. Speaking about Christ testifying about him. Even sometimes people at work are asking you, are you also a Christian? Did you see Did you see how they phrase it? Are you also? Because there are others somewhere they saw. Are you also one of them? Remember Peter? What did you say? No, I am not. Remember what you say? What you say? Yes, I am one of them and I'm going to heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. And I know where I'm going. And I know whom I'm going to see. I'm going to meet Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. Character created in Peter by the indwelt Holy Spirit of God. There is boldness. He is witnesses about Christ. His heart, his interest, his purpose is to testify about Jesus Christ. And then Peter was at Jerusalem when he started this piercing message. So, character in Peter, character in a pastor, character in leaders of the church, character in all of us as a church. It, it must begin somewhere. And I want to tell you, when we yield to the filling of the Holy Ghost, when we receive, we are going to see KCC not the same at all. KCC is not the same. And you can see, even right now, it is not the same anymore. KICC is moving because it is not mine. It is Jesus Christ. And he is filling the church with the Holy Ghost. And the church is going to do exploits for Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Don't be left out. Join in because the Holy Spirit is doing something. Number two, people's hearts were cut because the Holy Spirit is come. And according to John, the Holy Spirit is the one that convicts sinners. He convicts people, not me. 
Sometimes we are angry when we witness to people or when we tell them about Jesus Christ's salvation, we became angry that they are not changing. Oh no! The work of convicting the world about sin is Holy Spirit. That is his work. And that's why we need him to help us in prayer and in understanding how to go about the things of God. He convicts people. In this case, for the first time, the Holy Spirit is convicting people who are seated there. The Jewish people who are there, they are being convicted because there was a promise of a Messiah. There was a promise of one who is going to come, and now they have come to know he is here. Kume kundwa. What is the other word? Eh? Eh, kume the visitation is already here. The Holy Spirit has brought it at home. And the people of Israel, those who are there in that gathering, they said, <laughs> we know. Now we know. What shall we do? Help us. Help us make decision on what to do. And Peter, again, being very careful. What did he say? Repent. Repent. He did not miss words. He said, repent and get remission of your sins and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, which is for you and for your children. Amen? Amen. And that's why we believe God is going to do something new in, our, in the lives of our children because they are going to know Jesus Christ and they are going to know him well. They are going to speak about him. We do not need negativity anymore. Our children will love the Lord. Our children will preach Christ. Our children will stand. No more business as usual. The Holy Spirit now is convicted. The Holy Spirit is doing the work. So what that tells a believer is that I should not be tired. I should get more strength because the Holy Spirit is going to do something. Even when the son is out there, even when the daughter is out there, the Holy Spirit is going to do something. Amen. He pricks, come on, and a pursuer. He pricks the heart. He pierces. And a penyam pagandani. And a tall chafu and a mabea. Okoka. Believe. In Jesus Christ. When you hear me talk Swahili, that's another language that I know. In fact, English may be the third or fourth language. Sometimes you say it's my second language. No, it is very far. Praise the Lord. Amen. And the Lord may give us this. So when it comes, hey, the time yes, speak it and do not feel anything. Hallelujah. People's hearts were pricked. And I'm looking at you, and I'm saying to the Holy Spirit, when shall you prick the heart of KICC? When shall you pierce the heart of KICC? So that we can love you, love you, love you with all our hearts. When shall you prick the hearts of men? So that they will melt to Jesus Christ, and therefore be able to carry the ministry of, of priesthood in their homes and the love of the wife and the children, the daughters are there, even when he disciplines them, he disciplines them in love so that even the daughter of Martin can say, I have seen a calm man. I know his eyes have turned red several times, but what that child saw in that father so a calm father. And understand, people ha are going to have their own interpretations of what they see. And we do not have monopoly of that. Thank God, we do not have that. They will say things, you know. But I want to tell you, when shall we be pierced? When shall the Lord pierce your heart, man? When shall the Lord pierce your heart, woman? When shall the Lord pierce your heart, young man and young woman and the youth? When, the, when, when is the Lord going to do that? The Kikuyu people have a song that they say, when 
the Lord shakes a woman. You know, when he's shaken, what does it, what happened? Somebody tell me. Anaruk. Yeah. It's not the same. Because there's power. There is power. I remember we were saved in the midst of the outflow of the Holy Spirit. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. That is when the Lord came into our lives, when we were young. And I want to tell the young now, it's time for you to drink all of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Drink. It's time. It's time. It's time. When you get married and you have your home, you, you have a lot of entanglement. You have heard me say many times, I used to walk with the Lord. I know what I mean. I was thinking the Lord. You would find me on the way, preaching the word, and talking to trees, and telling them, believe in Jesus Christ. So that if there is anybody there pursuing wood, they begin to hear the word of the Lord. Because I am drinking the Holy Spirit. I am full, and all I can say is the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ. Repent. And get the remission of your sins is key to forgiveness, is key to receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's what it is. And I want you today, because our time is over, I cannot finish this message. I, I, I was only page two. We will do it next time. But I want you to to ask yourself, do I need the fullness of the Holy Spirit in my life? I want you to ask that question. Do I need the fullness of the Holy Spirit in my life? And if the answer is yes, I want you to go far and say, what are the things that are hindering? What are the things that are standing on the way as a father, as a mother, as a man, as a woman, as a young adult, as a youth, as a child, as a pastor, as the wife of a pastor? You know, what is it? What is it that must go so that the Holy Spirit may come in? I want to tell you what, what must take place. Repent. Amen. Amen. Repent. 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 Tubal. 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 Repent. Repent. Boomer, repent. Repent. My wife, repent. My daughter, repent. Everybody, repent. Amen. And then we will get the remission of our sins. And we will have the fullness of the gift of the Holy Spirit come upon us. We will take this Father next time, but I want us to stand right now and ask God to do His thing.